HRC, 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 HRC. Hebrew reader, Hebrew reader, Hebrew reader, church. Greetings, brothers and sisters. We give praise to Ahaya Ashere Ahaya and our Adono Yache and our mother Ruaka Kwadoshi. We hope you all have been enjoying this time with us as much as we've been enjoying it with you. Uh, today we're going to be discussing baptism and is it necessary? Yache spoke of how it is essential to go through this water baptism in order to enter the kingdom of Allah Hayyam. We look at John chapter 3, verse 3 to 8. John chapter 3, verse 3. Yahweh answered and said unto him, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of Allah Hayyam. Nicodemus saith unto him, How can a man be born when he is old? Can he enter the second time into his mother's womb and be born? Yahweh answered, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, Except the man be born of water and of the spirit, he cannot enter into the kingdom of Allah. And then we see it takes two. The water baptism is the physical, and the baptism of the spirit is the spiritual part that cleanses from within. You have to become one whole new creature from within and without in order to partake in the kingdom of Allah. Right? Continue. That which is born of the flesh is flesh. And that which is born of the spirit is spirit. Marvel not that I said unto thee, ye must be born again. The wind bloweth where it listeneth, and thou hearest the sound thereof, but canst not tell whence it cometh, and whether it goeth. So if every one that is born of the spirit. All right. And we can look and see that this is indeed a part of the principles of the doctrine of Mishayaka in Hebrews chapter 6, verse 1 to 3. Hebrews chapter 6, verse 1. Therefore, leaving the principles of the doctrine of Messiah, let us go on unto perfection, not laying again the foundation of repentance from dead works so, and of faith toward Allah. So he tells the people, let's go on to perfection. So they were already doing the things that are about to be mentioned. Right. And the perfection was to go on to charity, which is the bond of perfectness. But he's telling what are the foundations? Repentance from dead works, confessing our sins and bringing forth fruit worthy of repentance. He was also saying, don't go backwards, or you have to start repenting again. Definitely. All right. Of the doctrine of baptisms. You know, it was interesting that for that one, he specifically said of the doctrine of baptisms. The word doctrine, you look at the definition, it also means instruction. So it's instructed to baptize. We have to actually get baptized. And the definition for baptism it's G909. Can you read that, please? Abolition. Ceremonially or Christian. That's Baptism, right. washing. Right. It's an interesting word there. It's to be submerged, cleansed. We see it's the act of washing oneself. Right. So we actually have to get washed. Ahaya further attested. This is not a new understanding. Even when in Isaiah chapter 1, I believe it's... Uh, I think it's verse 15, he said, wash ye and make ye clean. Right. He talked about our iniquity. So this is something that was understood of old time. Now let's look at the root word of that word baptism. In G907, it means to make whelmed, that is fully wet. Also in the Thayer definition, to immerse to submerge, to cleanse by dipping or submerging, to wash, to make clean with water, to wash oneself, bathe. Now, through the definitions, we get understanding of baptism and also through the scriptures. In the lives of Adam and Eve, chapter 29, it says, and in that time shall men be purified by water from their sins. 
but those who are unwilling to be purified by water shall be condemned. And John 3 and 5 says, Yache answered, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, Except a man be born of water and of the Spirit, he cannot enter into the kingdom of Allahayim. With the definitions in the scriptures, for baptism, water is required, yet it does not have to be done in a living body of water as the Lord's testimonies foretold of being purified by water and being born of water. The definition of baptism also shows that a body of living water is not required to actually baptize, that is, to make someone fully wet or whelm someone in water, or to immerse someone to make them clean with water. Hence, the scriptures show baptism can be done by immersing or whelming a person in water, even as the Apostle Thomas used a vessel of water to baptize and fulfill all righteousness. In the Acts of Thomas chapter 129 where it says, And he commanded a vessel to be brought and baptized them in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Now, we see that that's a part of the doctrine. We can also look in Luke chapter 3, verse 2 to 17. We have baptism, confessing our faults, and bringing forth fruit. Word of repentance is a part of what is necessary in preparation for the kingdom of Allah. Right. Luke chapter 3, verse 2. Annas and Caiaphas, being the high priest, the word of Allah came unto Yachin and the son of Zacharias in the wilderness. And he came into all the country about Giordano, preaching the baptism of repentance for the remission of sins. As it is written in the book of the words of Isaiah the prophet, saying, The voice of one crying in the wilderness, Prepare ye the way of Adonai, make his path straight. And notice the baptism is a part of the process of making its path straight in preparation for Yahweh's coming. The baptism is the repentance from dead works for remission of sins. So we confess our sins and we get baptized in confession that we need a cleansing unto the Father. That water baptism is sanctifying ourselves unto the Father. And we receive the blood of His Son. We believe in that atoning blood that we may be saved. And that's what purges our hearts to work the works of righteousness and live a life worthy and pleasing unto Allah. And then through Yahweh's blood, we receive the Holy Spirit. And that's the three things that we need to be complete, to bear witness of Allah in this earth. First John 5 and 7 and 8 said there are three that bear witness in heaven, the Father, the Word, and the Holy Spirit. And they are one. And then it says there are three things that bear witness in the earth, the water, the blood, and the Spirit. Right. These three are green ones. So you got to say how it all ties in. It's all necessary. All right. Every valley shall be filled, and every mountain and hill shall be brought low. Right. That's a similitude of our pride. Mountain and hill that's being lifted up. It's going to be cast down. And whereas the valleys, those that are lowly, they shall be filled with the rivers of living water. And the crooked shall be made straight. We were gone off of the path, and we are going to crooked. But now, as Isaiah chapter 30, verse 20 through about 22 says, you shall have a voice behind us saying, this is the way, walk ye in it. When you turn to the right hand or turn to the left, so Yahshua is going to be guiding us to make us go on the straight path instead of going crooked ways anymore. And the rough ways shall be made smooth. Right. The path of righteousness is smooth as opposed to the thorniness and what we would get caught up in. Like when he gave the seed parable about how the thorns, the riches right. of this world, take Choke away the seed. Choke right. We won't cleave unto the world anymore. So we'll be walking in a straight, clean path. And all flesh shall see the salvation of Elohim. Then said he to the multitude that came forth to be baptized of him, O generation of vipers, who have warned you to flee from the wrath to come? Bring forth therefore fruits worthy of repentance, and being not to say within yourselves, We have Abraham our father. For I say unto you, that Elohim is able of these stones to raise up children unto Abraham. And now also the axe is laid unto the root of the trees. Every tree, therefore, which bringeth not forth good fruit is hewn down and cast into the fire. That was specifically to the Israelites. Right. We cannot trust in who we are according to our bloodline. 
we have to actually bring forth fruit or we're going to be axed down and cast into the fire, which right. plain English means we are going to burn. And the people asked him, saying, What shall we do then? He answered and saith unto them, He that hath two coats, let him impart to him that hath none. And he that hath meat, let him do likewise. Then came also publicans to be baptized, and said unto him, Master, what shall we do? And he said unto them, Exact no more than that which is appointed you. And the soldiers likewise demanded of him, saying, And what shall we do? And he said unto them, Do violence to no man, neither accuse any falsely, and be content with your wages. Just tell them where the fruits. Right. Do that which is right. Even in the midst of the different jobs that we have, do that which is right. right. And as the people were in expectation, and all men mused in the hearts of Yachanan, whether he were the Messiah or not, Yachanan answered, saying unto them all, I indeed baptize you with water, but one mightier than I cometh, the latchet of whose shoes I am not worthy to unloose. He shall baptize you with the Holy Spirit and with fire. Right, we understand that from the baptism of fire. Right. right? Let's look also for when Yachi actually came to see that baptism does indeed fulfill all righteousness. So it's definitely necessary for us to do in these times. Matthew chapter 3, verse 13 to 17. Matthew chapter 3, verse 13. Then cometh Yahweh from Galilee to Jordan unto Yachanan to be baptized of him. But Yachanan forbade him, saying, I have need to be baptized of thee, and cometh thou to me? <laughs> right, good to you. <laughs> and Yahweh answered and said unto him, Suffer it to be so now, for thus it becometh us to fulfill all righteousness. Then he suffered him. So it is evidence baptism is important because John was hesitant to do it out of reverence for Yachi because of Yachi's authority, which he knew of. He knew he needed Yachi more than Yachi needed him. <laughs> Yet Yachi said it has to be done to fulfill our righteousness. So this lets us know we cannot attain unto righteousness without baptism because our Lord done us the example and he did it as well. Let's continue in Matthew 3 and 16. And Yache, when he was baptized, went up straightway out of the water, and lo, the heavens were open unto him, and he saw the spirit of Elohim descending like a dove and lighting upon him. And lo, a voice from heaven saying, This is my beloved son, in whom I am well pleased. And now we see what Yache experienced through the baptism, and we know we have to be baptized as well as he was, because he is our example. We also have in the shepherd of Hermas, the angel of repentance, uh, Phanuel. He attested that we cannot enter the kingdom without baptism either. Uh, let's look at the shepherd of Hermas, parable 9, chapter 16, verse 4 to 5, please. The shepherd of Hermas, parable 9, chapter 16, verse 4. The seal then is the water. And so they go down into the water dead, and they come up alive. Thus to them also the seal was preached, and they availed themselves of it, that they might enter into the kingdom of Elohim. Wherefore, sir, say I, did the forty stones also come up with them from the deep, though they had already received the seal? Because, saith he, these are the apostles and the teachers who preach the name of the son of Elohim. After they have fallen asleep in the power and faith of the son of Elohim, preach also to them that have fallen asleep before them, and themselves gave unto them the seal of the preaching. So uh, you can see, when even when the apostles died, they preached to the people that were in the graves, right. so that they can know the gospel of the son of Elohim as well. He preached to the dead, so the gospel would be heard in all creation that no flesh would be justified in his sight to say they didn't know or hear the gospel of Yahshua's atonement for sins and the call for repentance because the kingdom was at hand. Now let's return to Hermes parable 9, chapter 16, verse 6 to 7. Therefore when they lay down with them into the water and came up again, but these went down alive and again came up alive. 
whereas the others that had fallen asleep before them went down dead and came up alive. Those that went down alive and came up alive were the apostles. Right. So by their means, they were quickened into life. Right, because those that had not heard the gospel, they went down dead. But when they heard it in the grave, it gave life unto them. Right. right? And came to the full knowledge of the name of the son of Elohim. <laughs> For this cause also they came up with them, and were fitted with them into the building of the tower, and were built with them without being shaped. For they fell asleep in righteousness and in great purity. So there we see righteousness existed before Yahche came into the world physically. Right. It was just the fullness of the gospel was not preached to all men. Right. Only they had not this seal. Thou hast then the interpretation of these things also. I have, sir, say I. And there we see seeing that tower is the church. So right. see, that was understanding that. There is even baptism to partake in for certain ones to get into the city of Mishiaka. When we look at Apocalypse of Paul, uh, chapter 22, please. And then he took me up from that place where I saw these things, and behold, a river. And its waters were greatly whiter than milk. And I said to the angel, what is this? And he said to me, this is the Atruzan Lake, where is the city of Messiah. But not every man is permitted to enter that city, for this is the journey which leads to Elohim. And if anyone is a fornicator and impious and is converted and shall repent and do fruits worthy of repentance. Even in the heavens, we see how those that are converted from iniquity have to repent and bring forth fruit. It's essential. We cannot attain without bringing forth fruit because the fruit is the evidence that we've actually repented. All right, uh, continue. At first, indeed, when he shall have gone out of the body, he is led and adores Elohim. And thence by command of Ahia, he is delivered to the angel Michael, and he baptizes him in the Atruzan Lake. Thus he leads them into the city of Mashiach alongside of those who have never sinned. So you see, in this life we have to repent, be baptized, believe in the blood of Yahshua, bear the fruits of the Spirit, attain unto charity, the bond of perfectness, and have the Holy Spirit as our seal. And if we have to die in this world physically, when we go into the heavenly realm, there's also a baptism that we may be purified from all our former deeds to enter the city of Mashiach. Right. But I wondered and blessed the Hayah Elohim for all the things which I saw. Now, this is why his disciples were sent out to all nations to baptize them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Now, we understand that these things are requirements. Look at Matthew chapter 28, verse 18 to 20. Matthew chapter 28, verse 18. And Yahweh came and spake unto them, saying, all power is given unto me in heaven and in earth. Go ye therefore and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you. And lo, I am with you always, even unto the ends of the world. O men, o. All nations have to be taught to keep the laws as well. As he said, teach all nations. And he also said, teach them to observe all things. So they actually have to keep the commandments as well. And the members of the true church must be baptized in the names of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. The name of the Father is Ahaya, Ashere Ahaya. That is his name. There is not another rendition of his name. And then the Son's name is Yache. And then the mother's name is Ruaka Kwadoshi. These are the names in the true ancient Hebrew language. And these are the names by which one must be baptized under. If one is not baptized in these names, then one is not baptized in the true faith of the son of Allah Hayim. And the names that were given to the disciples to baptize in, one would need to be properly baptized under these true names from Yahshua's disciples when one has true understanding of the faith in Yahshua. To be an example of a believer by being a living sacrifice and ceasing from sin and bearing the fruits of the Spirit, Ahaya has not given us any permission for anyone else to do any baptizing in any place. May Ahaya be pleased to bring more laborers for his harvest at his appointed time. Since the fields are white already, 
For those who would like to be baptized, contact us via email or comment box that we may serve you in the furtherance of your faith in Yache. Hopefully, Ahaya be pleased to bring us together in unity of the Spirit. One must understand the true gospel before getting baptized because there is only one baptism for repentance of sins. Let's look at Shepherd of Hermas, Mandate 4. Please, chapter 3, verse 1 to 6, please. Shepherd of Hermas, Mandate 4, chapter 3, verse 1. I will still proceed, sir, say I, to ask a further question. Speak on, saith he. I have heard, sir, say I, from certain teachers that there is no other repentance save that which took place when we rent down into the water and obtained remission of our former sins. He saith to me, Thou hast well heard, for so it is. For he that hath received remission of sins ought no longer to sin, but to dwell in purity. That's why we need to understand what we're getting involved in before we get baptized. Because there's one remission of former sins. And once we're baptized, we ought to dwell in purity. Continue. But since thou inquirest all things accurately, I will declare unto thee this also, so as to give no excuse to those who shall hereafter believe, or those who have already believed. Notice. Notice. What he's about to say is not to give an excuse to sin. All right? Continue. For they that have already believed, or shall hereafter believe, have not repentance for sins, but have only remission of their former sins. To those then that were called before these days, Ahia has appointed repentance. For Ahia, being the discerner of hearts and foreknowing all things, perceived the weakness of men and the manifold wiles of the devil. So Ahia knew that this is going to be a journey. Right. A just man falleth seven times and getteth back up. Right. He knew that we would fall from the manifold wickedness of the devil and his subtlety. Therefore, if there's repentance, and that's the process, I have mercy, the grace to get it right. Hence, there's repentance, but there's no more remission of former sins after baptism. And with this understanding, let's get an understanding of true repentance to make sure we're walking in it. And we have insight about how to do it according to the testimonies because there's actually two different types of repentance and we want to be sure we're in the true one. Let's look at Hermes Parable 8 for understanding of repentance and how to ensure we're worthy of it. Hermes Parable 8, chapter 6, verse 1. Seest thou, saith he, how many repented and were saved? I see, sir, say I. It is, saith he, that thou mayest see the abundant compassion of the Lord, how great and glorious it is. And he hath given his spirit to those that are worthy of repentance. So we see that repentance gets us saved. And if we're worthy of that repentance, we will get his Holy Spirit. So it is important for us to understand. Chapter 6, verse 2. Wherefore then, sir, say I, did they not all repent? To those whose heart he saw about to become pure and to serve him with all the heart. To them he gave repentance. So that's the people we want to be. We want to show him that we are working to become pure, to serve him with all our heart. We're not doing it for show, but we're sincerely plowing, working, examining ourselves and purging our hearts so that we can serve him wholeheartedly so that he will give us repentance. Now, these are the types of people we don't want to be or we want to unlearn being if we have been continuing reading but those whose craftiness and wickedness he saw who intend to repent in hypocrisy to them he gave not repentance lest happily they should again profane his name so we don't want to be those persons who are being crafty 
who's putting on a show and not truly repenting from the heart to show ourselves where their repentance. And with that in mind, let's get understanding of what true repentance actually looks like so that we can do it and know we're actually in true repentance when we're doing it. In the Testament of Gad, chapter 5, verse 7, it reads, For true repentance after a holy sort destroyeth ignorance, and driveth away the darkness, and enlighteneth the eyes, and giveth knowledge to the soul, and leadeth the mind to salvation. And that type of man behaves in this manner. Testament of Gad, chapter 5, verse 4 to 6. For he that is just and humble is ashamed to do what is unjust, being reproved not of another, but of his own heart, because the Lord looketh on his inclination. So in true repentance, one is focused on the Lord, looking upon his inclination and aware of it. So one is attentive in thought and in deed to do the right thing. It goes on to say, He speaketh not against a holy man, because the fear of Allah Hayim overcometh hatred. For fearing lest he should offend the Lord, he will not do wrong to any man even in thought. These things I learnt at last after I had repented concerning Joseph. So seeing an example of true repentance, we can know what it looks like and how we ought to do it, to be focused, to do no evil, or no wrong to any man in word, deed, or thought, because the Lord looks on our inclination, and our focus is the fear of the Lord to make sure we don't do anything wrong in His sight. So I knew that this is going to be a journey. Right. A just man falleth seven times and getteth back up. Right. Therefore, if there's repentance, the process, Ahaya's mercy, the grace to get it right. Hence, there's repentance, but there's no more remission of former sins after baptism. Shepherd Hermes, Man A4, chapter 3, verse 1. I will still proceed, sir, say I, to ask a further question. Speak on, saith he. I have heard, sir, say I, from certain teachers, that there is no other repentance save that which took place when we rent down into the water and obtain remission of our former sins. He saith to me, Thou hast well heard, for so it is. For he that hath received remission of sins ought no longer to sin, but to dwell in purity. But since thou inquirest all things accurately, I will declare unto thee this also, so as to give no excuse to those who shall hereafter believe, or those who have already believed no, on Ahaya. For they that have already believed, or shall hereafter believe, have not repentance for sins, but have only remission of their former sins. To those then that were called before these days, Ahia has appointed repentance. For Ahia, being the discerner of hearts and foreknowing all things, perceived the weakness of men and the manifold wiles of the devil, how that he will be doing some mischief to the servants of Elohim and will deal wickedly with them. Ahaya then, being very compassionate, had pity on his handiwork and appointed this opportunity of repentance and to me was given the authority over this repentance. But I say unto you, saith he, if after this great and holy calling any one being tempted of the devil shall commit sin, he have only one opportunity of repentance. But if he sin offhand and repent, repentance is unprofitable for such a man for he shall live with difficulty. So there we see. We must strive to overcome the struggles of the evil spirits that are affecting us or have place in us before baptism in order to keep our baptism pure. One's heart must truly be found believing on the Son of Allah to be ready for baptism. And only the Lord knows when that time has come, as was the case with the Ethiopian eunuch. And he will bring it to pass by his apostles when the person is ready, just as he had done in his testimonies. We have to be prepared in our walk for baptism. 
Because if we are still walking in our former sins and are baptized, life becomes more difficult, as the scriptures show. We can't continue sinning often in the same transgressions and repenting after we are baptized, for our repentance becomes unprofitable. Because the road is straight and Yahche's yoke is easy. So if we're living with difficulty, we're in the crooked paths. We're not attained onto the clean, straight path. Right. So there we see the difference between repentance and remission of sins. And understand according to Scripture, there's one true baptism. So there is no getting rebaptized after you've been baptized in the true names. Right. So for those of you who have been baptized in other names or other renditions, trying to say the names, you have opportunity to get baptized correctly because you haven't been truly baptized. That's why you are able to continue doing the things that you were doing and living the way you were living without falling into difficulty and also you didn't come into the spirit the messiah of holiness that's why you haven't changed ah is very gracious that we're still alive and we have the opportunity to get baptized correctly and right. also to know the true gospel and what is required to partake in the yoke of Mishiach Yache before getting baptized, knowing that we have to walk in purity and being better on God against the wiles of the devil for those who are seeking to truly attain unto the goal of righteousness in Yache. Okay. Where are we at there? Where is that second comment? All right. And with that, also understand for sisters. There's a certain way to be baptized that Ahai has revealed in his records. So we would advise and encourage sisters and men who have wives to contact us via email, comment box, so we can discuss these things. Once baptized, we have to preserve our baptism in righteousness to attain unto the glory of Yache. Let's look at Second Clement, chapter 6, verse 1 through 9, and then chapter 7, verse 1 and 2, please. Second Clement, chapter 6, verse 1. But the Adonai saith, No servant can serve two masters. If we desire to serve both Elohim and Mammon, it is unprofitable for us. For what advantage is it if a man gain the whole world and forfeit his soul? Now this age and the future are two enemies. The one speaketh of adultery and defilement and avarice and deceit, but the other biddeth farewell to these. So there we see those are the things of this world. Right. All the works of the flesh is what this world desires, and those of that are the other side bid farewell to it. Okay. We cannot therefore be friends of the two, but must bid farewell to the one. And hold companionship with the other. You cannot serve Elohim and Mammon, as he actually mentioned in Matthew chapter 24. Right. Let us consider that it is better to hate the things which are here, because they are mean, and for a short time imperishable, and to love the things which are there, for they are good and imperishable. For if we do the will of Messiah, we shall find rest. But if otherwise, then nothing shall deliver us from the eternal punishment if we should disobey his commandments. Notice we have to actually do his will. Right. We actually have to do it. It's not just saying his name. It's not just talking. We actually have to do it. Right. All right. And the scripture also says in Ezekiel, Though Noah and Job and Daniel should rise up, they shall not deliver their children in the captivity. Right. That's interesting as well because right. Noah is also the father of the Gentiles too. Right. So it's for everybody. We all have to actually do the will of Yahweh. All right. Job is a Gentile as well. Yeah. <laughs> so like it's for everybody. All right. Continue. But if even such righteous men as these cannot by their righteous deeds deliver their children, with what confidence shall we, if we keep not our baptism pure and undefiled, Enter into the kingdom of Elohim. So there we see the pressures on us. Right. If theirs were so righteous that they can't deliver their children, how much more pressure do we have to get it right and keep this baptism pure? Right. Right? Or who shall be our advocate unless we be found having holy and righteous works? Because Ahia is righteous. 
we have to have works of righteousness toward him in order to have an advocate. Right. But yeah, just propitiation for us to actually hold weight. We have to actually show fruit worthy of repentance. So then, my brethren, let us contend, knowing that the contest is nigh at hand. So this is a war we have to fight. And that, while many resort to the corruptible contest, mm -hmm. yet not all are crowned, but only they that have toiled hard and contended bravely. So even the world is an attestation of what it takes to attain. Right. We have to go through it. Right. We have to fight very hard to attain unto this. All the right. gold is tried in the fire. That's for right. acceptable men in the furnace of adversity. Oh, Amen. You got one more verse, please. And let us then contend that we all may be crowned. Here's an example of how one had to truly understand the gospel and be baptized by Yahweh's disciples. Let's look at Acts chapter 8, verse 26 to 40. I'm going to read through that one. All right, Acts chapter 8, verse 26. And the angel of Ahia spake unto Philip, saying, Arise and go toward the south unto the way that goeth down from Yorochalam unto Gaza, which is desert. And he arose and went, and behold, a man of Ethiopia, a eunuch of great authority under Candace, queen of the Ethiopians, who had the charge of all her treasure, had came to Yerushalayim to worship, was returning and sitting in his chariot, reading Isaiah the prophet. Then the spirit said unto Philip, Go near and join thyself to this chariot. And Philip ran thither to him, and heard him read the prophet Isaiah, and said, Understandest thou what thou readest? And he said, How can I, except some man should guide me? And he desired Philip that he would come up and sit with him. The place of the scripture which he read was this. He was led as a sheep to the slaughter, and like a lamb dumb before his shearer, so open he not his mouth. In this humiliation, his judgment was taken away. And who shall declare his generation? For his life is taken from the earth. And the eunuch answered Philip and said, I pray thee, to whom speaketh the prophet of this, of himself or of some other man? Then Philip opened his mouth and began at the same scripture and preached unto him Yahche. And as they went on their way, they came unto a certain water, and the eunuch said, See, here is water. What do it hinder me to be baptized? Now, it was interesting seeing that he had to understand who Yahche was right. first. And Peter talked about that as well in the Acts of Peter, that uh, you have to understand Yahweh in order to understand the gospel. So we see he was preached Yahweh and then continued. And Philip said, If thou believest with all thy heart, thou mayest. And he answered and said, I believe that Yahweh Meshiach is the son of Elohim. And he commanded the chariot to stand still. And they went down both into the water, both Philip and the eunuch, and he baptized him. So there we see the man had to truly understand who Yahweh is. And to be a believer, we understand from the lesson, what is a believer? Right. Or are you a true believer? What it actually means to believe. So this man was convinced of what Yahweh had done and I'm convinced of what he had to do to partake in that hope. Hence, he was ready to be baptized. And he had to be called and chosen. Right, because I was... Elohim led him. Right. Uh, you, uh. <laughs> 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 ah, praise Ahia. <laughs> that was what was interesting that the spirit had Philip go right. told Philip to leave at a certain time right. had the spirit had the man reading the book of Isaiah right. R right in time and this man was a Gentile showing that it's for all nations right. had him there right in time when Philip came to him and asked him the question he was right at the part he needed to be at to understand the gospel that's right the Spirit guideth all things, so and let that be an encouragement to brothers and sisters watching to know the Spirit working expressly. All right. So, no fret. Just be patient. Learn the gospel, and at His appointed time, all things will come to pass according to His pleasure. That's right. All right. Did you? Uh, I'm at thirty nine. All right. And when they were come up out of the water, the Spirit of Ahia caught away Philip, that the eunuch saw him no more. And he went on his way rejoicing. 
So he got exactly what he needed. Right. And that lets us know that it's the spirit that's working. It's the spirit that bringeth people along. Right. It's not actually us. Right. Philip did. Philip operated in obedience to the spirit. Hence, right. everything went according to Ahia's will. He did the work. That's right. The work he of took the vessel. That's right. Humble servants, unprofitable servants at that. So there we see how the things work. And now the man has been baptized to receive the truth. The spirit is going to continue working in him to bring him unto Mashiach. All right. All right. And again, we exhort to understand for women there are special guidelines Ahai has revealed. There's a certain method that they must be baptized to be properly baptized. The women have not been baptized properly according to the truth of the gospel in Yache. So please contact us so we can discuss the truth of the gospel first that you may also attain unto the true baptism of Mashiach Yache. Please take heed and learn the true gospel, sound doctrine, and the fruits of the Spirit to understand what is required of us before baptism, so that one is prepared for what one is getting involved in, lest we jump in hasty without preparing ourselves and we fall away in the end because we didn't count the cost and really take into consideration what this gospel is actually calling for. And there's a parable that Yache gave to understand this. In uh, Luke chapter 14, verse 26 to 35. Luke chapter 14, verse 26. If any man come to me and hate not his father and mother and wife and children and brethren and sisters, yea, and his own life also, he cannot be my disciple. So the first thing we have to do is put Yache first in our hearts. Right. That doesn't mean stop loving everyone else. But it's saying you have to prefer Yache before everyone else. Right. Can't be a respecter of persons because it's going to cause you to fall away from Yache. Absolutely, and it's a transgression of the law. Right. Right? And whosoever doeth not bear his cross and come after me cannot be my disciple. You have to put on that affliction that comes with preferring Yache first. Right? For which of you, intending to build a tower, sitteth not down first and count of the cost? whether he has sufficient to finish it. So there was a, he's given a worldly parable to understand. you got to consider what is it you're really getting involved in. Right. right. Continue. Least happily, after he have laid the foundation and is not able to finish it, all that behold it begin to mock him. Right. And then he's going to laugh at us. Right. If we jump in thinking we have the foundation of Mishiach and we good to go, not knowing to understand the gospel, what we're really getting involved in, what it actually takes, the enemy is going to laugh because we got all that way. We did all that work to fall away in the end because we didn't finish building the house. That means we didn't get to the perfection of Mashiach Ayache. Do you put the shepherd Hermes in this lesson about the part where when they see how hard it is that they fall away? I didn't. Okay. I look for it. Why? Saying this man began to build and was not able to finish. Oh, what king? Going to make war against another king, sitteth not down first, and consulteth whether he be able with ten thousand to meet him that cometh against him with twenty thousand. So if if a king is making war and he only has ten thousand people and he's going to make war against twenty thousand, he has to make sure that he can defend twenty thousand. He has to make sure that he's well equipped and prepared to fight this battle, knowing the odds, knowing that he's outnumbered, or else. While the other is yet a great way off, he sendeth an abbasage and desireth conditions of peace. So likewise, whosoever he be of you that forsaketh not all that he hath, he cannot be my disciple. As he's shown, the man that he had checked to see, he knew he was outnumbered. Right. And this for us, we look at it from us today. We're fighting against spiritual wickedness in high places. Right. We're outnumbered. Right. We can't fight against them ourselves. And then he said, when he realized that he's at a disadvantage, he makes peace. Right. Who is our peace? Yache. Yache. <laughs> Yache. <laughs> we run to Yache. And then what did he say after that? So likewise, whosoever he be of you that forsaketh not all that he hath, he cannot be my disciple. I have to count all things but dung. Right. That we may attain unto the righteousness of Yache. Right. Salt is good, but if the salt have lost its savor, wherewith shall it be seasoned? It is neither fit for the land, nor yet for the dunghill, 
but men cast it out. He that have ears to hear, let them hear. And he was explaining, you got to know what you're getting involved in, or else you'll fall away in the end and you'll be unprofitable altogether. And you'll perish. So we have admonition on that to understand why it's so essential to know what we're getting involved in and then to get truly baptized. You want to find that other parable that talked about how the people, they turn back. That was Shepherd of Hermas Vision 3, where it says in chapter 7, verse 3, But the others, which are near the waters and cannot roll into the water, wouldest thou know who are they? These are they that heard the word, and would be baptized unto the name of the Lord. Then, when they call to remembrance the purity of the truth, they change their minds and go back again after their evil desires. Lord willing, we be not among this number, so that when we see the purity of the truth, learning the gospel, the fruits of the Spirit, and the laws we have to keep, that we're encouraged and zealous for good works to get baptized and strive unto the end for the perfection of our faith and not turn back after our evil desires. Also, we don't want to be those that think there's a better way aside from the one true way in Yache. In Hermas Vision 3, it also said in verse 1 of chapter 7, These are they that have believed, but by reason of their double heart, they abandon their true way. Thus thinking that they can find a better way, they go astray and are distressed as they walk about in the regions where there is no way. Allah be gracious that we be not found going to find another way aside from the true way in double heart, nor do we go back after evil desires, but we come with the good desire and with one inclination and one heart, singleness of heart even, to the baptism of Yahche Christ. Praise uh, Allah. So you have the admonition and understanding that baptism is necessary. And please contact us so we can discuss these things further. Brothers and sisters in Yaja Meshiaka, Chala. Chala. HRC, 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 HRC. Hebrew readers, Hebrew readers, Hebrew readers, church.